This is Chris Martin with Free Effects Tutorials, and today we're going to take a look at doing some 3D tracking within After Effects. So here's the end result. We've got some Artbeats footage that was given to us. We want to thank Artbeats for that. And we have motion tracked it or 3D tracked it here in After Effects to get the logo to stay in place. All right, so that's what we're going to do. Now to get started with this, I took the Artbeats footage and just dropped it into a new comp. And then I'm going to right click on the footage. And you can't see it here, it's off screen, but it says Track Camera. So I'm going to click on Track Camera. And it's going to go through this process of analyzing the footage. Now this is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. When we come back, we'll move on. All right, so we're back, and if we run through this, we can see that we have all of these little points all over the footage. And the good news is they seem to be sticking in place while we're going, while we're scrubbing the footage. All right. Another thing that you can take a look at is over here in the Advanced tab, we have a 0.45 pixel average error. And it seems to me that anything below 0.5 generally is a good track. So the next thing that I want to do is come over here and decide where I want my text to be. So if you just move along here, you can see that you get this little target. And you can choose any place. So I'm going to try and find something that I think lines up with the mountainside pretty well. I'm going to right click. And I'm going to click on Create Shadow Catcher, Camera, and Light. And you see that we get these three new items here. Now if I click on the Shadow Catcher, you can see that here's where the Shadow Catcher is. Right now it's invisible. But this is what's going to cast the shadow on the side of the mountain. Now what I want to do is hit P for position and copy control C this position data. Then we're going to come over here, we're going to grab our logo, just drop it in there, and we'll turn that into a 3D layer. If we click P for position, I'm going to control V and copy that information right there. I'll go ahead and scale this up by hitting S. Something like that. Hit R for rotation. Play around with the rotation here. Get it where I want it. Maybe something like that. You know, whatever you want. We pull in here. We can see that that's sort of sticking on the side of the mountain like we want it. Now something else I want to do, I'm going to run over here to two views. And I want to look in the top. And and find my logo and just pull that out in front of the shadow catcher a little bit. So here's the shadow catcher and there is the logo. Okay, so maybe that's good enough. Let's take a look at the light. Let's look at the light properties here. All right now it's a point light. Let's turn that into a spotlight and look at some of the transform properties. I'm going to go ahead and copy the point of interest to the same place that my logo was. And for the position, let me take a look in the right view here. Right now we're on top. I'm going to go to the actually left should be fine. So the point of interest is right on the logo the position. Let's take the Y position up a little bit more. And then I'm going to run over to the logo and take a look at some of the material properties. We want cast shadows to be on. And now you can see we're getting our shadow over here. So maybe we want to come up to the light and adjust the position of the light, maybe up a little more. And you can just play around with this. This is fine for right now. Let me go back on to one view. So now we can see that we have that 
and we have the shadow behind it. Now you can play around with it and get it done however you want, but that's kind of the workflow to make it happen. The next thing that I did was put a gradient ramp on my logo. So I'm going to type in ramp, look for my gradient ramp, drop that on there, and you can change this to whatever colors you want. I'm going to do something like a gray to a darker gray, something like that. The last thing that I did was to come over here, put a a new adjustment layer in here. And in the adjustment layer, I went over and got my real smart motion blur. Pop that in there so that we've got some motion blur happening in here. I took the whole thing and went to compose layer or pre-compose, I should say, which is right here. It's hard to get to. There we go. I'm working with two monitors here, so I've got stuff all over the place. Click OK to pre-compose. And on the adjustment layer, again, I came over and grabbed my Magic Bullet Looks. Again, this is a plug-in from Red Giant. Pretty amazing plug-in, but it gives you some really cool different effects that you can go with. So let's say that the black and white is going to work for me here. Click on finished. And then you can just render this out. So I'll go up here to composition, add to render queue. And I will give it some parameters here. Go with QuickTime. We're going to resize this 864 by 486. And I'll save this out and I will be right back. Okay, so we're back and here is the finished piece. So we took the footage in After Effects and did some 3D motion tracking and took a logo and just put it in there. And looks pretty good. All right, so I hope this was helpful and I will see you guys next time. This is Chris Martin with free effects tutorials.